Hi guys, this is gsmom.com and I'm here with the Oppo Reno 12 Pro for a full review. We're dealing with a handset which was launched in Ibiza last week and now here we are with a full review of this high mid-range handset which seems rather focused on uh, AI tools for its uh, photo editing as well as a pretty high performance from MediaTek CPU and uh, of course it comes with a bunch of 50 megapixel cameras, two at the back, one at the front, some uh, solid selfies and solid close-ups and we even have some videos from Ibiza. Um, we also have some food shots in Barcelona and a lot more to talk about, including an AI summary feature and some more AI features which should help you with the, well, navigation and just generally doing stuff on the phone. So it's IP certified, it charges fast, has a new technology called Beacon Link and now it's time to start the review. By the way, the price should be around $500 or so. Now design-wise, this beautiful backside may look purple but it's supposed to be a sort of silver and uh, it has some very nice waves here as you can see in the light. It's plastic, just like the frame, just so you know. It's a pretty flat device, flat on the front and flat on the sides, pretty easy to wield. It has some, um, uh, I would say, uh, highlighted edges around the camera to make it a bit more elegant. They're slightly dotted and as you can probably tell from here to make it a bit more elegant uh, and uh, in spite of using plastic for the back and plastic for the frame the device actually has an internal chassis which is rather resilient it's made of alloy to keep everything together it also comes in brown uh, gold and silver now the measurements 7.4 millimeters in thickness and just 180 grams good news ip65 certified it can take some water and dust pretty comfy and easy to use you can easily reach the power and volume buttons and it has gorilla glass victus 2 protection at the front side and for its protection when you drop it it has a special foam inside cushioning the components now the screen you're seeing here is of the amoled variety obviously it's a 6.7 inch that shows 1 billion colors and has a resolution of uh, 2412 over 1080 pixels has 120Hz refresh rate and HDR10 plus support. Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protected and also 89.4% screen to body ratio. Now the experience uh, goes something like this. This is what the screen can deliver. Let's do it full screen. It's a rather immersive panel I would say with very vivid colors, crisp image, good contrast even in the Ibiza sun and wide view angles. Okay, so that's that when it comes to the screen test. Now let's see how much we achieved in our lux meter test. That's how we measure the brightness with the lux meter. We achieved 948 lux units, which is actually great because we surpassed the likes of the iPhone 15 and Samsung Galaxy A55, as well as the Moto G84. We scored below the Motorola H40 and the Honor Magic 6 Lite, just so you know. Moving further than that, I think it's time to address the CPU here. And we're dealing with a special type of MediaTek. It's a MediaTek Dimensity 7300 Energy, tailor-made for Oppo in order to reduce power consumption. That's the whole energy thing. Okay, so we're also getting 12 gigs of RAM, as well as half a terabyte of storage of the UFS 3.1 variety. The good news is that we're also getting a micro SD card slot. And uh, here in the About Device section, you can also add more RAM up to 12 gigs extra. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so I think it's time to address the performance. The device doesn't suffer from any sort of lag uh, or overheating. It runs games like a champ. I would say there is no problem with it except, well, there is. Um, there's a bit of throttling, as you can tell from this one. Throttling happens. Uh, it takes out the performance by 31% during the test and it even happens early. Drops 20% early in the test. Speaking of tests, we have a bunch of benchmarks here to show you. We go here, benchmarks, we start off with Antutu 10 and uh, we surpassed Honor 90 and Nothing Phone 2A as well as the Realme 12 Pro Plus. Those are the devices that we're able to beat. With the same result, we were below the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G as well as the Galaxy A55 from Samsung. Now, when it comes to other tests, for example, uh, Geekbench 6, you can see that in the single core test, we're above the Realme C55 or Moto G14, not very flattering. While in the multi-core, we surpassed Infinix Note 40 and Realme 10 4G. Um, we also were below the Moto G84 and the Oppo A98. If we're looking at the 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme ES 3.1, once again, not a very impressive result, um, only beating older phones like the iPhone 12 Pro Max. 
We're also beating the Huawei Nova 11 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy A54. We're below the Huawei Nova 10 Pro and the OnePlus Nord 2T. And uh, for a newer benchmark, there's Wildlife Extreme where we're above the Honor 90 and the Galaxy A54. At least there's no compromise when it comes to the temperature. So if you go here in benchmarks, we didn't go above 35.8 degrees Celsius. So that's that. Now inside this rather skinny handset, there's a rather decently large battery, 5000 mAh. And uh, this lithium polymer unit charges at 80 watts. There's no charger in the box, sadly. So we had to use a separate one. The results uh, it delivered here are quite impressive, 26 hours and 33 minutes, which is very solid for your streaming and binging needs. It's uh, superior to the Honor Magic 6 Lite, uh, Motorola H50 Fusion and the Honor 200 Pro. Now, it's also below the Realme 12 Pro Plus and the Nothing Phone 2, just so you know. When it comes to continuous usage, we have PC Mark with a rather impressive 17 hours and 28 minutes, making us reach top 20. and. Um, with this result, we actually surpassed the Realme 12 Pro Plus, Nothing Phone 2 and uh, even the Galaxy S24 Ultra, believe it or not. We're below the Realme GT6 and the Oppo Reno 11F and the Nothing Phone 2A. The charging was a bit on the long side, even though we used the SuperVOOC charger 100 watt that I borrowed from the Realme GT6. One hour and three minutes necessary to reach from 0 to 100% and after 30 minutes you're at 51%. And I think I may have uncovered the reason why the battery is so good when it comes to the um, video playback. So there's a feature here somewhere which is useful to um, do the video playback. Okay, so let's maybe find it power saving mode here. Video battery saver is this one here. It's activated by default. So that's how you can achieve such long times of continuous video playback. Rather solid battery, I would say, but expect more from the charging, to be honest. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the acoustics. We have stereo speakers here. I see we have one at the bottom, while the top side is most likely this one here. And uh, we don't have an audio jack, just so you know. And if you look in the settings, you're going to find some uh, options for your experience. You have a hollow audio here for sound from multiple location and all reality with these profiles can be smart movie gaming or music now if you want to listen to some tunes we have here a special sample to test the speakers here we go there's an ultra mode going above 100 percent 300 percent Okay, so there's a bit of distortion happening at maximum 300% uh, volume, that's for sure. I would say that the bass is satisfying, the treble, well, not so much when it gets uh, all hot and bothered with a high volume. I would say keep it at 80%, you should be happy with the clarity. So that's that, very good voices though, so yeah, bass fine, voice fine, treble, not uh, exactly. Okay, so um, we did a bunch of measurements with our decibel meter and here we go. We achieved 83.3 decibels at the top side and 85 decibels at the bottom with a typical acoustic sample. This uh, bottom value makes us surpass the OnePlus Nord 3 and the Galaxy A54, uh, but we scored below the Nothing Phone 2A and the Motorola H30 plus uh, the Motorola H40. In games, we went as high as 97.6 decibels, not exactly a record, it's almost the equal of the Galaxy S24 Plus. It beats the Honor uh, Magic 6 Lite and the Oppo A98. It's below the Motorola H40 Neo and the OnePlus Nord 2. Finally, we have reached the camera and uh, we have here a cutout in the screen for a 50 megapixel shooter with 4K capture, f2.0 aperture. At the back side, we're pretty well specced with a 50 megapixel main camera with optical stabilization and f1.8 aperture. There's another 50 megapixel camera, telephoto with 2x optical zoom, and finally an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera with 112 degree angle. Dual LED, dual tone flash, and 4K 30 frames per second capture. While the options are pretty typical for an Oppo phone, ranging from panorama to dual view video, high resolution, time lapse, uh, document scanner, night, slow mo, and sticker. There's a portrait mode with the usual AR color portrait and bokeh flare, which we've come to know from the Oppo Reno six times. There is the photo area here. There is the video section with the special ultra steady mode. And finally, the pro mode with the settings for exposure, shutter, ISO, white balance and whatnot. OK, so the gallery, we have plenty of shots taken in Barcelona. And here we go. We're go I'm going to start with the daytime ones. And I focused a lot on the selfies initially because uh, the Oppo Reno series has traditionally been about powerful front cameras. Okay, so uh, 
obviously excellent bokeh which was able to cut me uh, from the background in a pretty fine manner without missing anything you can also apply the bokeh flare effect and also the ai color portrait keeping you in color and leaving everything behind you black um, bokeh flare basically means that you're going to highlight some of the light sources behind you now the actual captures in barcelona uh, made me very happy when it comes to the color calibration no matter if you're using ultra wide or the main camera uh, my only drawback are maybe the colors of the sky and the vegetation at times which may feel a bit oversaturated aside from that once again very happy with the selfies the details the clarity and the quality of the selfies were spot on okay so this is plaza catalonia in barcelona in the center and i do see quite a bit of detail here and good clarity and once again the skies are a bit too intense for my liking uh, but the zoom was actually a present surprise this is not 2x zoom this is another 5x zoom and details look pretty amazing so yeah uh, digital zoom is quite satisfying and I actually used it more than once with pretty good results this is the overexposure i was talking about here the trees and a bit over saturation the green is too intense compared to what i perceived in real life this is uh, a color portrait again as I said before, excellent selfies. The food photos were amazing, so if you're a food blogger, this is actually better than quite a few flagships. For example, I remember the Galaxy S23 series and S22 wasn't able to handle these shots that well. This one, mid-range phone, actually does. You have the texture, you have the details, you have the focus, so yeah. And you got beef. A rather nice amount of beef here and some cake, which actually melted faster than I could shoot it. Okay, and then we went for a walk again, and again the sky is a bit unrealistic, it's a lighter blue compared to the real life, of course, because of the sun, but the sun was going down, we we're closer to sunset, so colors came into their own at last. Okay, these are videos, and we have here, we can actually do a comparison, this is the main camera, and this is the ultra wide camera. Uh, if you looked at this on a larger screen, you see that there are less details in the ultra wide, of course, and on the sides you can see... Uh, that the image uh, is a bit faded compared to the center. Once again selfies, once again satisfying and uh, let's go further and find more subjects here. A regular shot, main camera, ultra wide shot. You can see there's not much color difference between them, albeit the ultra wide is just a bit darker. And of course we have beautiful scenarios to capture like the Montjuic castle with once again impressive level of digital zoom. We capture some flowers takes a few attempts to get some decent close-ups i wouldn't go as far as to say you can take macros with it but definitely you can handle some close-ups with a pretty decent amount of focus and some nice colors by the way okay so that's that when it comes to the daytime shots i was pretty impressed by them but uh, keeping things in a mid-range area it's about 80% of what the Honor 200 Pro can offer and pretty similar to the Realme GT6 if you really want a comparison with other phones out there. This has been the daytime series of shots. During the nighttime I felt that the street lights were a bit too big for my liking. You can solve that with the night mode. Uh, the level of yellow is fine. I'm talking about the hue of yellow here which is generated by the street lights. That's okay by me. And we see here um, sort of their... Colosseum, if you can call it like that, where there were, used to be bullfights in Barcelona. This is the regular shot, and this is the ultra wide shot with a bigger light. Uh, not many reflections, so that problem is solved. And you're going to see, we have quite a few selfies here as well. Uh, I expected just a bit more from the selfies, but be advised and try to use the option that turns the screen into a sort of flash. Uh, okay, so I promised to show you the night mode, um, which is, should be here. So. First of all, this logo is white. It's actually uh, colorful in blue, so you can see it here. What night mode does is that it highlights the contours of the objects. The contours are clearer here with the night mode compared to here without the night mode. I mean, uh, the photos without night mode aren't bad, but the night mode definitely amplifies everything, takes it to a new level. And this is the ultra wide. You can see here that uh, the logo has been a bit overblown. Of course, food photos again. This is the Five Guys Burger Place in um, Barcelona. Excellent meat, by the way. Better than the Five Guys in Paris, for sure. And a lot of graffiti. Uh, Barcelona is a staple for graffiti. So, yeah, that's pretty nice. Overall, it still feels like a high mid-range phone. Something that uh, the likes of Xiaomi, Honor, Huawei, Oppo, 
Realme would deliver, but Naride mode is definitely the staple of these captures. Now let's talk about the videos. Now let's talk about the videos and we have a dedicated section for that here in the videos department. Okay, so first of all, when it comes to panning, I would have to say that the details are fine here. I love the blues. Um, the greens are a bit oversaturated in the vegetation department. Uh, moving subjects are also fine. There's no problem here. So all in order, pretty satisfying 4K experience, detail-wise, exposure-wise, I have nothing to complain, maybe except for, once again, the vegetation. Okay, uh, here we have a zoom test, which is pretty smooth, but even after 2x, you're going to be spotting some um, detail lack. So 2-3x is fine, but then you start seeing the noise and it shows it mid-range limitations. Selfie. So we have a selfie video here, like a travel vlog of sorts. Okay, as I'm walking through Barcelona, satisfying microphones, nice ambience, uh, excellent focus, nice, uh, even the details of the background are fine, too bad for the stabilization lag, even though there's a special stabilization option which I didn't quite activate, so it could work fine for vlogging. Okay, this is the focus test, alternating between an object in the foreground and the background, quite fast and accurate I would have to say. And then we have the stabilization video test, which is uh, this one here. This is the ultra steady mode, which shows like a pretty satisfying capture, but it's only full HD, 60 frames per second. You can see the Montjuï castle in the background. A bit darker than I would have expected. However, we have this clip here, which is much more satisfying in 4K and without any special stabilization option activated. 4K 30 frames per second is good enough, so there's no need to go ultra steady and drop details. So yeah, all in all a pretty satisfying capture, uh, nothing to separate it from the likes of the Realme GT6, Honor 200 Pro, uh, other Huawei Nova phones or Honor devices, so yeah, it's pretty much in the ballpark of the typical high mid-range uh, device. Now the low light capture goes something like this, it shows its limitations, I mean the street light halos are a bit big, things are a bit shakier at night. But I like the color calibration, I like the reds, I like the blues, I see some reflections here and there, iPhone-like reflections I would have to say. The colors are quite fine and the brightness is also satisfying, so yeah, there's that. Okay, and I also have two clips, I decided to test out the selfie videos, they feel a bit weird with the special options as they cut me from the background. But apparently there is also a special stabilization option for selfies. If they were a bit brighter, it could have actually been a very solid selfie capture at night. Still, not bad uh, details in the background. That's something I noticed. Okay, and of course, uh, the Ibiza clip, we're also in Ibiza, and this is the video we captured. I won't play the music because it's copyright strike, but it captures the ambience in a very fine manner. Uh, the music as well, it can handle the strong lights of the club, so yeah, all in all. A pretty satisfying experience, camera-wise, video-wise. Although, keep in mind, uh, the limitation is typical to a mid-range phone. Now, when it comes to connectivity, this is obviously a 5G device with Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.4, GPS, GLONASS, uh, Galileo, BDS, and QZSS. It has NFC, there's an infrared port here, emitter to control your TV set like a remote, and a USB-C 2.0 port at the bottom. There's something new here, it's called Beacon Link. Thanks to Beacon Link, you can communicate to another person who has an Oppo Reno phone with Beacon Link, uh, up to 200 meters in distance, even if you don't have a signal. So if you're in a subway and the signal is lacking, you can still talk on the phone, thanks to Beacon Link, which is a pretty cool feature. And then uh, we also have uh, the speed test. By the way, the calls were loud and clear. And uh, as far as the speed test is concerned, um, these are some of the results we achieved. So basically 780 mega per second in download, 700 mega per second in upload on Wi-Fi and the 5G test we're going to be doing that a bit later. When it comes to the OS and UI, it's Android 14 with ColorOS 14.1 on top and we have here a sidebar which gets contextual. Now the file dock can be used to store text and photos, as you can see for yourself here, you can store a picture. It's basically like a handy clipboard of sorts. Now, uh, as I said before, it's contextual, so if you're here in Chrome, 
you get extra options from the sidebar, like AI Speak and AI Summary. AI Speak will read out for you everything you can see, and AI Summary will make a summary of what you're reading. So, for example, if I go to the BBC website and I do this, AI Speak, it will probably read out to me everything here. And this one here as well, AI Summary. Is going to generate a summary of what I had there. Okay, and uh, this also applies to YouTube, which gets yet another option. It's called Air Scroll. I can use my hand to scroll up and down in the feed, as you can see me doing right now. So yeah, those are some of the features available here, but wait, there's more. Um, aside from doing the whole summary and air scroll and AI speak and AI summary, you can also use it in the recording section. So I have here a recording of a speech from Elon Musk. And if I press summary, I can turn this into a, well, summary. And aside from summary, it's actually bullet points of what he said, not just translating things from uh, voice to text, but a summary. And the AI continues with more features. Now let me shut this down with more features related to photo editing so one of the best ais i've seen recently in photo editing appears here it's even better than the samsung galaxy s24 one and i have a perfect example for that now let's see so we have the smart lasso feature you can go to the edit you can do ai erase for some reason if i want to erase the top part of the statue here instead of creating a mask of the sky it will create another object which feels fit for this column. I noticed that on a crane where I actually cut one of the cables using this feature and it put a hook at the bottom of it. So yeah, and it's learning because this is not a perfect uh, rendering here. Uh, and you can try yet again and have it redo it once uh, again and again till it gets it right. So yeah, it's still a work in progress, but you can get the idea. Uh, the feature is not exactly for that. Uh, this is just an example of what you can do nowadays with technology, but um, okay, hopefully didn't save it like that. Discard changes. Uh, you can definitely cut a car out of the scenery, for example. So let's say I want to get rid of this red car. You can go to edit, air erase, here, smart lasso it. It identified the object and is removed while creating a mask behind it which perfectly reconstructs the objects behind it you can even get rid of the shadow of the car like that I have to say this is more accurate and quite fast compared to the galaxy s24 it's actually superior uh, oppo has worked with google for that and the result is quite impressive there's also a people removal feature so yeah let's cancel it discard uh, let's find a scenery with people the people removal feature actually looks for people, identifies them and removes those who you don't, don't want to have in the shot. It only keeps the center ones who are looking at the camera like you. Remove people, it's looking for them, scanning them and has found them. Remove all is available here. Voila. Of course, their shadows are left behind, but you can definitely move them with the smart lasso. There's also another feature which is more basic and you've seen it on the iPhone. Uh, you can turn yourself into a sticker. So, for example, I have this here. I, I keep myself pressed and I can drag myself to the file dock here. And once again, I can also use the stickers feature. Stickers and add myself as a sticker from here. Reposition myself next to myself and so forth. So, yeah. And of course, customize myself with wigs and things like that. These are the AI features of the phone. And aside from that, there's a the typical experience with the swipe best navigation, with the news feed here, with the recents available here, with the drop down section, and also the uh, quick settings. Uh, let's see what else. We got a gaming feature here, which lets you tweak the experience with 4D vibration, frame rate setup, recommendations, and profiles for all the games. We got a phone manager here with tools related to app updates, installation from external sources, should also be a virus scanner and optimization of sorts. So yeah, there's a lot of things happening here with and without AI. A bunch of applications are available here, like a note-taking application, Orelax. There's also 
Zen Space, if you want to relax even more, there's TikTok pre-installed, quite a few pre-installed apps and games, I have to admit, there are quite a few of them. Okay, when everything's said and done, it's time for the verdict related to the handset. This is the Oppo Reno 12 Pro. And on the Pro side, we have an excellent AI Erase, which is better than the Samsung Galaxy S24 one, a long battery life, micro SD card slot, a quite bright screen, a pretty okay performance in day-to-day -day use. And I have to also mention that uh, Beacon is welcome. Uh, the AI summary is also welcome for journalists. We have good stabilization, some solid selfies and selfie videos, good colors in general, pretty okay zoom, and um, good night mode. Uh, it's a resilient phone on account of that whole foam thing inside. And um, you can also use the screen when it's wet with oil, Coca-Cola and water. On the con side, the charging I expected to be faster, we don't have a charger in the box. There's some overexposure here and there. The ultra wide camera is not impressive during the night time. We have a plastic back and frame. Um, and also I feel that uh, um, some of the night videos aren't that impressive, particularly the selfie ones. You can also be aware of the throttling and the extra loud acoustics which may be distorted. In the end, this is probably the first mid-range phone which actually uses AI properly. Definitely more than the Galaxy A devices, definitely better when it comes to erasing people or objects and replacing them. So yeah, that's fine. That's the core of the handset. It's not exactly a gaming phone on account of the CPU, but it's definitely good for holidays. On account of the colors it captures, it has ultra wide, it has a zoom, it has everything, even a selfie camera, which is very capable, including with 4K capture. Plus it can take a punch because it has that foam inside and fast charge, reasonably fast, plus long battery life. So it's a traveler's phone and a phone for people who actually edit their photos on the go. That's it from us at gsnron.com. Hope you like the review. Goodbye.